Hey legends, welcome to another video and today I'm going to show you a few of my dirty secrets. We've got some tanks that I want to clean up, I'll show you how I'm going to do that and also I'm going to run you through some of my philosophies with keeping healthy tanks in general. Let's jump straight into the video. So first of all we've got one of my absolute favourite tanks here. This tank always does really well but at the moment it's doing a little bit too well. So I want to get in here, give it a good trim up and also along the top of the tank here you can see that there's some scum and oil and film. That comes from the food but also from low aeration and that's partly because as you can see the filter is pretty well blocked up so I'm going to have to get in here and clean this up. So with these sorts of jobs where things are a little bit overdue, I'm just going to get straight in with my trusty scissors first and we'll clean up a lot of that bulk stem plant material because if I do it after cleaning all the filter, well all of those trimmings and little leaves and stuff that are going to come off are just going to get in there anyway, so might as well just do it now. <laughs> Now when replanting stems, you might have a stem like this that has a whole bunch of roots at the end. Sometimes there'll be even roots in the middle. If there are roots in the middle, you can break it at that point and place two stems in the substrate. And then of course you'll have two plants. For me here, I've got some roots and then a bit of growth and then some more roots. I could break it at that point and plant both of these stems and they both would grow. But I think I'm just going to plant it exactly like this so that it can have a chance to reach the light all the way from the back from day one. Now the exception to that is this stem here where I have uh, three hanging stems from one main stalk, each of those having roots at their base. So for these I'm going to pull them apart. I'm still going to get plenty of length on those. I'll be able to plant them in and they'll all grow nice and healthy. So just easily like that and then discard the base. Now I've got three nice stems to plant. I was going to start putting this around other tanks but I'll show you before I do. Check out this huge pile of trimmings that have been taken out of there. It really doesn't take too long for a giant amount of stem plants to add up so it is something that you are going to have to factor into your maintenance schedule. So in this tank here I have this Awaza Biomaster 350 which usually is super simple. You can just take out the pre-filter and that's it. But today I'm going to crack the whole thing open and we'll clean it fully out. All right, so before we crack this open, I think it's a good opportunity to touch on the first bit of fishery and philosophy that I'd like to talk about today. And that is going to be bacteria. Now, of course, we keep our filtration, most of us, to harbour beneficial bacteria. And a lot of people these days are really keen on no filter setups and that sort of thing. So how does it all work? Well, I like to keep substrate in some tanks, but also there are other tanks that I like to keep something else that will harbour that bacteria. Like you can see over here, I have some tanks that are set up for breeding tanks, other tanks that have changed a lot over time. We have tanks that are set up for fry that I don't know what this tank could look like today, tomorrow, next week or so forth. So of course filling this up with a deep deep layer of substrate isn't going to be a great idea because, because what if I want to set it up as an African cichlid tank today but I want it as a planter tank tomorrow. Now if it was me I'd have a deep layer of sand for the African cichlids but I'd have a deep layer of sort of planter tank substrate or at least potting mix or something that's going to harbour some nutrients for the planter tanks. So for those reasons I like to incorporate terracotta pots and I have them in pretty much any tank that is going to be a bare bottom aquarium. My view is that terracotta pots make great additions because they're cheap, they look sort of natural, as natural as you can get. You can quickly pick them up and put them in a tank and that tank is cycled. It's a great way to move plants around like if this plant here did really well in this tank and I wanted to try it out in another tank for a while. Well it's not as permanent and the, t the plant itself isn't going to get as upset, melt back as crypts and swords can do sometimes. As well as that if I find that uh, this black Venezuelan Corydoras for example is going to start to pin holes in, the, in this Amazon sword, I can quickly just pick it up and move it somewhere else. So 
I think there are so, so many benefits to something like this. It's gonna have some water moving super slow through it as well. So even though I've never tested it, I also think that it could lower nitrates with some denitrifying bacteria as well. So what in the world does that have to do with this filter here? Well, a lot of us keep filtration to harbor that bacteria. And therefore, when it comes time to clean it, a lot of people are really worried about running it under tap water because you're gonna kill all your bacteria. Well, in my case, every single tank has either a terracotta pot or a thick layer of substrate to act as a fail safe. So generally when I clean filters, don't tell anyone, but I run it under tap water because I have plenty of other bacteria in the tank anyway. Now, does that mean that you should start doing that too? Well, that's really up to you. Every individual circumstance is different. For me, a lot of these terracotta pots, a lot of these tanks have been running for three or four years. And I'm very just confident because I've done that for a long time. Everyone's circumstances are different. And there are other factors that might mean if you do things the way that I do it, you might have a crash, which we can get into in just a second. Okay, so part two of the fish room philosophy. Now, I think I'm also able to get away with this because I keep a lot of my tanks lightly, lightly stocked. Looking around, you'll see that for every tank, it's not like what you see in pet stores or anything like that. You got all of this swimming volume for maybe, I don't know, 20 fish. That one's even one of my heaviest stocked tanks. Over here, I've got a four foot by 18 inch by 18 inch aka what people normally call a 75 gallon and I've just got a few corridors and a spawn of bedders in here so nothing crazy at all. These are all tanks this whole uh, 60 centimeter tank just has a dozen or so emerald raspberries in it they're way way at the back there. That tank has like two small rainbow fish in it. Every tank here is super understocked this one here is a hundred liter tank there's like 20 CPDs in there. Over here this whole tank here which is a three foot tank, this has two discus in it. There's one of them there. So even though I might be killing off some bacteria, the tanks aren't super overstocked, so it can actually compensate for that. So that's why I think you gotta take everything with a little bit of a grain of salt, especially when you hear it on the internet, because if you're at home and you start to incorporate the practices that I just spoke about, except your tank has a handful of species of Cori's, a couple of different Tetras, Cardinals, Neons, maybe Raminos, whatever. And you've got a two foot or 60 centimeter tank with 50, 60 fish in it all of a sudden, which is very, very common, especially with beginners and that initial rush of uh, collectoritis. And you try and apply something like this, or even if your tank just hasn't been running that long and you think that bacteria has had time to accumulate in the vessel that you are choosing to, to use and it just hasn't quite done so yet, well, maybe it wouldn't work for you. Let's take a look at this after, yeah, at least two years of running. Not too bad. Two more trays, I think, in here. Another layer of sponge, not too bad. Overall, not bad at all. Credit to that pre-filter. So I guess what I'm trying to say is threefold. First thing being anything in your aquarium will grow bacteria if it's left in there for long enough. Second being, once you leave things in there for a really long time, that's when your bacteria colony gets really diverse with all sorts of weird and wacky critters in there. Of course, ones that you can't see, some that you can. But the other thing is that I believe it's really, really important to have something in the tank that is gonna permanently harbor that bacteria whether that is substrate or anything else. And so long as that's sufficient, then don't stress too much when it comes time to clean your filter. With, I guess, a total caveat on that statement that says that as long as your aquarium is appropriately stocked, that is not overstocked. In my case, I like to add extra buffer by understocking. I feel like we're getting a little bit ranty today, but I do feel like just having a chat with you all, so. I guess that's the way that it's gonna be. Another thing that I often get asked about is water parameters. People are really, really specific chasing numbers. So I guess that's a good enough um, excuse to run through my next item of fish room philosophy. And that is um, water, water chemistry, water parameters. I have two simple rules when it comes to keeping fish in pH. That is, if the pH is low, 
or at least supposed to be low, then I add botanicals. You can't really tell what this is, but it's um, Indian almond leaves. The other option I like to incorporate are these uh, black water tea bags, or there you go, Indian almond leaves. Plenty of great options. You can often go and collect your own. Just make sure they don't have any critters inside them and also make sure that the area they're collected from don't use pesticides and stuff like that. But um, any hardwood leaves, things like oak leaves I've used a ton. Great, great options for fish that are gonna appreciate lower pHs. As well as that, I incorporate things like driftwood and I often use aqua soil or pH lowering substrate. Now, if things like high pH, that's also as easy, as simple of a fix. See, this is my trophies tank, base rock, cereal stone, things that are gonna incorporate minerals and introduce calcium and that sort of thing. Limestone based products are great for raising the pH. Also mind the dirtiness of this tank. As you can see, I'm a bit on a bit of a cleaning spree today, but I do in introduce a little piece of it, bigger piece of it. If there's tanks that I believe over time, the pH is gonna crash. So why does that tank have limestone? Why do I believe that tank is gonna crash? That's because that is a tank that doesn't have a terracotta pot in it and doesn't have any substrate. In my tap water is naturally very low in KH, which is what holds the pH value of your water. So very, very quickly, just from existing, my aquarium water is gonna drop in pH. Well, that seems to be flowing a lot better, so it's time to top it up. However, even just that level is probably more science than I want to get into today. But what I'm doing now is just filling up the tank with normal tap water. A lot of people are worried about adding dechlorinator. At what point do you add it? I don't find it really matters. If I'm organized, I'll put it in before, but um, as long as it's not gonna fully cycle 100% of your water through your filtration and or substrate and all that sort of stuff that we just spoke about, then I don't believe it's gonna be an issue. That tank filled up a lot faster than I was expecting. So for today, I've filled up the water first. Sometimes I fill up the water before I dechlorinate. Sometimes I fill up the water after. But anyway, um, there's only been so much that's gone through the filter so far. And I don't have a lot of chlorine in my water anyway. So I just take my little bottle of Seachem Safe here, not sponsored. It's just a powderized version of Prime, but it's really cost effective, especially if you're changing a lot of water. So. I have a larger container and I just um, put it into this smaller one for portability. But yep, dechlorinator in and that's it for this tank. This next tank here is a bit of a disaster. The light is really quite high powered, but I don't know, I can't really be bothered <laughs> getting in there and turning it down to be honest. Also this tank is being overtaken by a bladder wart. If you've never dealt with it before, thank you lucky stars, it's a carnivorous plant but it only eats little sort of uh, micro crustaceans and so forth. However, it's an impossible thing to get rid of. It's kind of very stringy. I'll try and find some in here for you. Just gonna scrape it down though with a razor blade, super cheap, just buy a pack of 10 from your hardware store. Best um, algae cleaner thingy that you can get. Brand new one if you can, rusty one at a pinch though. All right, well that looks a lot better, I'm sure my stir by couriers will be a lot happier. Or at least I will because I'll finally be able to see them again. But to move on and to sort of summarize my ethos for keeping nice healthy tanks that aren't gonna become a real pain. Have you ever had those tanks that just never, never work for you? They're always annoying. They always look bad. The fish always do terribly and just nothing seems to work the way that you want it to go. Well, that's probably because of just a few simple things. As we mentioned, having a stable place for a good quality colony of bacteria, perfect. We, we've got that nailed. Second thing is keeping nice, stable water parameters, and we're gonna do that by not mucking around with the pH, not playing around with way too many buffers, things are going up today, down tomorrow, and all that sort of stuff. Just keep it simple, bit of limestone, or some sort of botanical material. Next thing is going light on the stocking, having plants if possible, and just a few fish. It can become a bit more of a fun activity if you even have to go through and search for the fish, play a little bit of hide and seek. Next one is food. Heaps of us feed way too much food to ourselves. I'm kind of 
guilty of that, but also to our pets. Fish, uh, if you've ever kept algae eaters and you, know, you see them just sort of foraging the entire day. Have you ever kept bristlenose and you say, this bristlenose, it's just working the glass 24 seven. That's because algae is not very nutrient dense. Now that's fine when it comes to plecos because they kind of just do their own thing and feed themselves. But what about things that are gonna enjoy a little bit more protein? Things that we actually have to specifically feed pellets and whatnot. Foods that we buy for our fish today, especially pellets, are usually quite nutrient dense, which means that the fish really, really don't need a lot of them. And that's why when we go away on holidays, our fish can survive for 10, 12 days with no food at all. That's because what we are feeding them is packed full of really good stuff, stuff that would take them ages to get in the wild. So by going in every single day and feeding huge handfuls of food to the fish, it's just, it's just packing them full of stuff that they don't really need. Give it a go, lower your food. So maybe drop things down by a third tonight. Keep that going for the next few weeks. See if there's any change at all. And if there's not, then it probably means that you're overfeeding. And by lowering the amount of food that we're feeding, that's gonna do two things. One, it's gonna save you a lot of money on food. And two, it's gonna mean that you have to do much less maintenance. And that's as simple as it can be. A lot of people overcomplicate it with all sorts of jargon and science, but really fish tanks are a closed loop system. They are a product of the capacity of that system, basically how much bacteria can handle the ammonia being put in, the input, which is ammonia, which comes from fish food and fish waste. So feed less and have less fish in the tank. And that's gonna equal having a great time, having a fantastic, enjoyable hobby, and maybe getting really, really bad MTS, multi-tank syndrome, and ending up something like this. So hopefully you liked that video. It was something a little bit different for me, but it was good because I got a little bit of maintenance out of the way. If you did like this one and you do enjoy this style, please let me know down below. I'm really interested in seeing what you guys actually wanna watch rather than sort of trying to guess and ending up somewhere totally different. Thanks for watching guys. If you did like it, it always helps me out too. Smash like, hit subscribe and all that fun stuff. And other than that, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.